Park Young Ni is a very、uh, well-known Korean author. Who wrote of Korea's history spanning from 1897 to 1945 through her saga *The Land* (Toji), which has also been adapted as a television series two times. After she passed away in 2008, an award was established in 2011 under her name to celebrate a novelist each year whose works represent great literary achievement. This year's winner is one of the great American. Novelist Richard Ford. He has received this award over the weekend, and his iconic works include *The Sports Writer*, *Independence Day*, and *Canada*. All are, which、uh, should be、uh, for our listeners' sakes here in Korea, also found in their Korean translated versions. So, our very special guest joining us here in the studio, Richard Ford, sir. Thank you very much for joining us, and appreciate the time of、um, what I imagine should be a very.、Uh, Hectic schedule since you've been here, but、uh, making your way here to the studio, we certainly appreciate it. Well, Henry, it's a pleasure to be here. It's it's it's, it's hectic, but it's also wonderfully hectic. Yeah. Well, we thank you.、Um, also,、uh, in regards to the、uh, Park Young Ni Prize that you received over the weekend,、uh, I know you've received、uh, countless awards, including the Pulitzer uh, prizes uh, from countries ranging from Germany to here in Asia, and. Perhaps the awards start to run together. Maybe you're running out of room on on your mantle. But、uh, in terms of winning this award,、uh, what, what did it mean to you? Well, it,、uh, to some extent, I suppose meant that I haven't been wasting my time for the、yeah. past fifty years、um, to be winning such an award in Korea.、Um, For books that I wrote in little obscure places in the United States is is a miracle, really,、uh, for me personally. But it also means that 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 literacy is alive and well in Korea, and that and that Korean readers would be interested in American writing, and from a collegial point of view, which is to say, from the point of view of me and my friends who、mm-hmm. are writing books in the United States, it's extremely encouraging. In terms of that appeal.、Uh, I, I've read in previous interviews where、uh, you, your books are very well received around the world, including especially in Europe.、Uh, do you find it? I, I find it kind of interesting how there are these universal sort of values or truths、uh, that come out in writing, where a, a country that seems very different, like here in Korea, can also find、uh, your art to be so compelling,、uh, e- even though there is a translation aspect to all of this. Do you find that there are certain writers, regardless of where they're from, including yourself, where、uh, there are these sort of uh, universal uh, values or truths that that come through to people, regardless of what language or background they're from? Well, it's one of the miracles of translation that.、Um, We can learn that people who might seem to be very different from us are, in fact, more li- like us than we would have believed otherwise.、Uh, for for me, as far as the subjects I write about, I I write about families. I write about intimacy between women and men.、Um, I write about people's relationship to where they're from and where they live now. Th- these these are. Whether they're universal or not, they're rather basic kinds of experiences that people have in Latvia and then have in Korea and have in Congo. So,、uh, f- I, I, you know, that's just what my nature、right. brings me to. I, I mean, just to touch upon because we don't have obviously、uh, endless amounts of time, but、uh, your works have been featured in、uh, things like feature films,、yes. uh, Wildfire.、Uh, the, you, you're very famous for the、uh, the Frank Bascom trilogy, including, of course,、uh, uh, the Sports Writer, which I think a lot of people always、uh, bring to your attention whenever that's they、fine. meet you、I'm, for if, the first time. If they're going to bring something to my attention, that that's just, that's a good one. And and I think a common theme that a lot of people、uh, who who really enjoy your work is the fact that you do.、Uh, Craft these compelling narratives of people who maybe from the outside looking in、uh, lead relatively unremarkable lives, and and that even I understand also、uh, is a part of the the recent memoirs you wrote, which are sort、Correct. of bookended by your mother and your father, which you I think also said didn't necessarily lead、um, super accomplished lives, but it was just something that、uh, you needed or wanted to put to print. Well. I, I suppose to bring attention to the kinds of people whom I bring attention to, including my parents, is to is to be seeking a virtue, 
And, and, and the virtue is to affirm life. The virtue is to say, look at these people closely. You might think you have little in common with them. You might think that they offer you very little. But through the agency of literature, which is to say felicitous, well-chosen, serious language, maybe you can actually find something about these people that is worth your notice, that is worth affirming life. I think a lot of people would be curious as to, um, now that you are, of course, uh, well-established, you've had a long and distinguished career, how it all started, because uh, I understand you grew up in the South. Uh, I did. And uh, you were part of, of course, uh, a period of time which perhaps was noted for troubled race relations uh, among Absolutely. people in the country. But also uh, a state like Mississippi, which has a lineage of, of producing uh, great writers as well. Was this something that was always just a part of your youth that you knew you wanted to do? Or was this sort of uh, a, a meandering path that you fell into? That's putting it nicely, a meandering path. It was I was totally clueless. I, I was a I was a bad boy. I was a juvenile delinquent when I was growing up. I, I'm dyslexic. I didn't read very well, and yet, in our town in Jackson, Mississippi, was Eudora Welty, and up the road was William Faulkner. And and what that meant, um, in a sublime way, was that in the air around me was the permission to be a writer. In the air around us was was the possibility that there was something beyond whatever confinements that you faced parochially in Mississippi. There was a place for the imagination. You you were a sports journalist as well. Uh, I think a lot of people ascribe, maybe uh, inaccurately, a lot of the uh, the character in the sports order as being semi-autobiographical or at least taking elements of your life. Uh, I understand that uh, it could have taken a different path because I think in another interview you said uh, while you're working at Inside Sports that if you had gotten a job at Sports Illustrated, of course, uh, the most one of the most uh, prestigious sports publications, that you might have just stuck with that and and not gone and become a novelist. Is that exactly true? right? I mean, I guess I don't have that traditional hierarchical sense that one kind of job is necessarily higher on the ladder than another kind of job. The job that you can do that makes you happy is the job you would be lucky to have. And that job would have made me very happy. Mm. I mean, someone might say, well, being a novelist and having your books published all over the world is, a, is kind of a better deal than being a sports journalist. But if I had, if I had ended up as a sports journalist, I'm sure I would have been really happy because I've been married to my wife and we would have had the life that we have. And so um, I I don't look back at things like that very much, but when I am made to, I think, yes, that would have been good. That would have been happy. Things like sports journalism and just, I suppose, the way people communicate. Uh, I know you're not uh, somebody who uh, is active on social media, but a lot of people sort of not credit, but perhaps blames this phenomenon as being sort of a a leading cause of the degradation of the discourse and maybe a moving away from um, works of art that that take a longer time to not just produce, but also to to consume. And, And we're seeing it in the political climates in Europe, in Asia, and especially in the United States. Is that a is that a phenomenon that is somewhat concerning to you as people's attention spans uh, get shortened? Or do you think that it is just sort of kind of the ebb and flow of how history works? Well, would that we would know that. Um, um, I mean, I think, as you say, that these are media, that, that, that they are not the content. And so since novels are not about their medium, they are about their content, I think that there's just as much opportunity for these media to in um, instruct us to cause us to reflect, to be as useful to us as a medium for literature as an, as a, a book between two covers right. is. So I, I mean, I, I can't, as a novelist, being basically an optimist, I, I, I can't wring my hands at these things because you can't wring your hands at what will ultimately be progress. So my hope is that we can use these media for the same purposes that we use novels between covers. I understand that uh, you do still teach literature at Columbia University. Is that correct? Correct. And that uh, in the past you have also taught writing as well. Uh, But uh, you've come to a point now where you have uh, you formed the belief that uh, it doesn't really matter if someone wants to become a writer or not, and frankly, that you don't really care. That's right. But the the value of 
literature and and reading, whether one becomes uh, an author or not, you you still do believe that that is something that should be uh, something a principle that everyone uh, everyone should strive to have. It was the experience that I had that caused me to be a writer, no doubt about it. But it could also have caused me to be a lawyer, mm. which is what I studied. So um, it seems to me I can't predict whether a young person will become a writer or not. I actually got kind of tired of trying to do that. Right. But I can predict that if you are a reader, you will both have a chance to be a writer, but have a chance to be a human being as well. In terms of uh, the rest of your life, as uh, you uh, go forward, uh, I believe you do not write quite as prolifically as as you've done in years past. Well, I don't know. I never thought of myself, Henry, as being prolific. I I, I mean, I'm 74. I've written 13 books. I've got two books now that are on my desk. It seems to me to be about average for okay. me, that I've got a couple of books working, and then maybe if I live four or five more years, I'll publish two or three more books. And so that'll, that's my clip, basically. That's about how fast I do things. And for you, uh, your uh, intention would be to continue to write, I guess, until the end, right? Well, my intention would be to continue to write till I was no good at it anymore. That's right. that's what my intention would be, and I would hope that I would be the one to detect that rather than have to have somebody in the New York Times tell me that I'm done. So I'm always looking at what I'm doing in terms of am I getting better at this? I mean, I think even at my age, 74, I have to get better. Mm. If I'm not getting better, why am I doing this? Final thoughts. Uh, what do you plan to do uh, the rest of your time in Korea, and what's your impression of the country? I'm well, probably going to get to talk to people who are doing what you're doing, and I'm going to get a wonderful chance tonight, um, Monday night, to meet a bunch of Korean readers, which I haven't done as much as I would like to do, and will now get a chance to. I'm thrilled. Well, Richard Ford, thank you very much for joining us, and obviously congratulations, as well as best of luck to you in the Great future. Great pleasure, Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.